Welcome friends, please come visit with me while I reveal my new blogging room. Raymond and I started this over a year ago on my birthday. I already changed some of the original ideas as you will see in the intro versus the live reveal. Starting here on the left side of the entrance is a drop down desk that Raymond and I built. I bought the antique board from a local antique store for $10. The spring hinges are from Amazon. I will leave that link in the shop section. I use this table when the loom is not here. It pops up and down so I can eat my breakfast and watch the sunrise. The little back lip on the table is from a pallet board that we use for the lathing strips on the wall. Onto the windows. These bad boys are custom made from our local glass company whom we use a lot to make mirror glass tops for tables. We did have to pay them to install them since we didn't want to be responsible if we broke or cracked them. You should have seen them coming up the mountain. I wouldn't want to have been them. It was well worth the extra labor. Each window is a 3x5 and solid with glass just like the commercial storefront. It does get extremely hot here in the summer but we did purchase a new Havoc unit at the end of fall for a very good price. We've yet to install it. That's on our honey to-do list. It's porcelain and we installed it ourselves. I still remember hanging out the primitive window by my ankles and stealing the orange dividers at 3 a.m. just to try to finish this floor. This chair is my boing chair, if that's even a word. It was sitting on the porch and I rarely sat in it. I like to sit in it and reflect for a few minutes each day to gather my thoughts. It's very peaceful up here and I love looking out at the pond. The pond is fed by a natural spring. When we bought the property, we noticed a wet spot. Ray dug a hole and it has filled itself ever since. As you can see, the Gingins like to come up and visit and eat the leftover bird seed dropping. Moving on to the wood stove. I had this wood stove originally and it had a blower and it literally heated me out of the room. I knew once I committed to making videos, I wanted a real cook stove. I personally would rather cook on a wood stove than a commercial one, but with this heat, it is not always feasible. This is an antique bellow that I actually use every single time I light the wood stove. Let me tell you, it saves huffing and puffing. Onto my new wood stove. I absolutely love this. We found it on Facebook Marketplace and Ray picked it up. It was about a two hour drive each way. I prefer to hang my cast irons on the back wall where they're out of view. And here are my two warming oven drawers. I also use them to store utensils when I'm not using them. It is great when I want to proof yeast on a cold day. And here's my little potpourri pot I picked up the other day for 50 cents. It is better than using the cast iron which rusts and they are harder to clean. And down below you will see my wood box and my kindling box. And speaking of rust, you will notice that this oven stove does need a good polishing. This is one of two side tables that Ray and I built last summer out of leftover wood as we were building our farmhouse trim. I put one in here and one in the other room. 
If you are interested in how to make your own DIY salt lamp, I'll leave the description in the link. That's where I put my Berkey water for cooking and for my plants. And now for the decor part of my blogging room. The basket houses my newspaper for the wood stove. That's little Josephine and the gourds that I grew the summer before. This picture I got for $8 at the local thrift store. And that is a secretary desk I got a few weeks ago. And that is the before when it was all green. And then that is the after. We sanded it and sealed it with a wood conditioner. And here is a refresher of the intro before pictures with the entertainment center, the round mirror, and the orange end tables. Now let's go into the now reveal again. And that is my antique 1700s antique hutch I had in the other room I brought in here. There's my linen and baby alpaca I got today. You'll have to excuse me if I sound like a little kid in a candy store. I have been waiting so long for alpaca and linen. Unfortunately, it was $215. So when you look at something that's handmade, now you know why the cost is so expensive. And these are my cotton washcloths that I am presently working on. Here is my Singer Old Fashioned Desk I got a few weeks ago for $45. Here are the before pictures. As you can see, it was in desperate need of scraping and cleaning. And then the after pictures. And then we tore it all apart, oiled it, and got it running in tip-top shape. In this picture, the sewing machine is in the place where the loom is right now. So I do swap them out, and I still have that great view. Now back to the left side of the room. This is my couch that I am not very fond of, but it will have to do. I was actually looking for one of those old comfy white couches you see in libraries and people's homes. But that didn't happen, so this will have to do. And on to the mirrors. The first one you saw in the intro, the round one, I actually made from a $2 clock from a garage sale. That's inside the house. I found this one at our local Good Samaritan thrift store for $15. We swapped the door so now that it swings to the left, as you can see, now I have valuable wall space with the clock and the pegboard on the right. And that white little table I got at my friend's shop, it houses all my dehydrator trays and mats. This basket Ray and I made over 30 years ago. I now use it for herbs, but back in the day, I use it as a dough rising basket. This door we got for half off at the ReStore. It was 40, we got it for $20. As you can see in the pictures, it was plain. And then we stained it and hung a barn rail on it, which we have several barn rails over the house. I will leave the link in the description from Amazon. That is the before, and that's once it is stained. And here is the final reveal. The handle came from Hobby Lobby, and the glass I created doing a faux mercury glass. If you'd be interested in a full video on how I mercury glass, leave a comment in the description below with yes, you'd be interested in mercury glass. This workbench I got from Home Depot. This is where I do my videos now. A lot of storage underneath. The butcher block table came from an estate sale. And finally, that is the tracks that we installed last week. The first houses the iPhone and the second one will house one of my uh, Canon cameras so I can do overhead B-roll shots. Ray and I actually did a whole video on this that I have to edit, but it showed how to install the tracks and the holders for the iPhone and for the camera roll. I'll be putting that out next week. Yeah.